Okay, National College Football Roundup. This is a story that I thought was very interesting. So, Georgia offensive line coach and associate head coach Matt Luke steps away and basically says, hey, I want to spend more time with my family. And remember, this is a guy that just a couple of years ago was Ole Miss's head coach for a few years. Uh, he's been with Georgia as the O-line coach and associate head coach the last two seasons. Just won a national championship, right? But the, the thing that stood out to me about this, Ted, you and I, we've, we've talked about what the grind is like for a college football coach now. Mm -hmm. But normally when you think a guy, okay, he's stepping away, like for whatever reason, you're thinking, oh, okay, he's an older dude. You know, he's, he's been coaching for a long time. And Matt Luke has been coaching for a long time, like over 20 years, I think. He's 45 years old. So you've got a young guy. He is young. Yeah, young guy saying, man, like, hey, the, the grind's a little too much for me. I need, I need to spend, I want to spend more time with my family. And it's just, it, it's just one of those things where it reminded me that, Number one, Kirby Smart is an absolute grinder, right? Uh, I think that you, you've heard all kinds of people talk about, not that he's like really, really difficult to work for. Like he's right. just really, really demanding. But George's recruiting, the way that they go about it, like it's 24-7, 365, like it never sleeps. And just you think about everything that goes into being a college football coach right now, recruiting, Name, image, and likeness, transfer portal, and all while you're trying to develop your current players, you're monitoring what your current players are doing, you know, when it comes to off the field and in the classroom. And you're also trying to coach, like you're, you're, you're game planning, you're, you're preparing for practice, like you're putting these things together. And, dude, it's just a lot. And I, I saw this and I was like, oh, damn, he's only 45. And he's basically saying, this is – you know, I need, I need a breath. It's basically how I interpret it. It just, it was just a reminder to me that college football coaching is, I, I know they get paid a lot of money, but damn, it's demanding. It is. And, you know, on top of all that, there's also, there's also the fishbowl part of it too. Right. And a lot of these college campuses are in smaller towns and, you know, there's just, you can't, you can't just, you, you can't go be a normal person, right? With, without getting, getting hounded perhaps. And there's a lot to it. And I think a lot of, a lot of guys get into it to be a football coach, right? Because, you know, a lot of guys were players and it's what you know, and you enjoy the game and you want to teach the game and scout the game and, coach the game on game day and be a part of that competitive uh, fire and going out and winning and competing. It's different than playing, but you're still, you're still in the fire. I mean, I, I would say that football coaches are probably more active and engaged than any other sport, right? Every play it, you're, you're constantly engaged and you're constantly a part of the outcome. Uh, it's not really like that in a whole lot of other sports. Uh, most, mostly the hay is in the barn until, you know, it's competition time and it's off you go. Um, I feel like there's, there's probably a lot of coaches that look at it and say, well, am I, am I a football coach anymore? Or am I a, you know, a guidance counselor and a disciplinarian and like, there's so much stuff other than football. So I always wonder like how, how do coaches deal with that? Because football, you know, ends up being one of the, it's a big part of what you do, but gosh, all of your time is spent on other stuff and not necessarily football. Yeah. And it, it makes you wonder if, because Matt Luke's a hell of a football coach, right? Like, it, and it makes you wonder if more, if we're going to see this throughout college football a little more and 
unless some things change. And remember, I'm uh, I'm all for the name, image, and likeness stuff. The the transfer portal, I I don't know. I know people have talked about windows. I, I don't know, you know, how much you really can rein it in with where it started. So I, I don't know if it's going to get any easier or any less stressful for for college football coaches. And I I think you know a lot of people see it and like see what they have to deal with and it's the old thing like hey that's what the money's for right <laughs> it's like you you are paid to deal with all this stuff but yeah and i some just some of these guys like like matt luke was a former head coach he's made a bunch of money yeah and oh, he's yeah. 45 and it's he's probably at the point where it's like how much more money do I need to have the quality of life that I want and spend the time, the amount of time with the people that I want to spend that time with? It's like, you know, you, you reach a point where it's like, do I have everything I need? And can I go enjoy my time left on this big rock? Yeah. And it, it it makes you wonder if we're going to start seeing more college coaches try to get to the NFL. Right, because I think, and you've heard a lot of coaches talk about this, but I think a lot of a lot of college coaches love love helping young men like develop as people. Development, yeah. Like not not just a football piece, but like being an influence in these young men's lives. And we've talked about how it feels a little more business like now it feels like it's getting professionalized more and more but are there going to be more guys that look at it like hey this just isn't what i thought or what i want it to be and maybe they go to the high school ranks right Uh, for guys that you know really want to have that influence but it's going to be interesting to see over these next couple years if we see some more coaches step away kind of like Matt Luke did or try to try to go to the NFL or maybe try to go to high school. I just, I, I don't think that, you know, we're going to lose all the good coaches in college football because there's just so much money that you can make, but it, it's just something that, you know, we, we should probably keep an eye on because I saw this today and it made me think, huh, that is, that's interesting. Well, the problem with, it's it's tough to just go to the NFL because there's a there's there's a limited amount of spots and there's a lot of turnover, but it's musical chairs turnover, not necessarily guys that are no longer in the business. Um, so it's tough. It, it's really tough. Now, the next alternative would be USFL, XFL stuff, but as we know, there's just there's no I mean, not guarantees, not even uh, close to being anything for long term there. You don't even know if the league is going to withstand one year, two years, three years. So that's not much of a career. But until you have other alternatives, there's not there's no there's not a whole lot of like kind of middle of the road. It's either you're in it, you're strapped in. This is the real deal or, you know. There's lower division two, II, division three stuff out there, but yeah, you know, there's like a serious fall off, fall off in pay. Yeah. And that's, you know, I, I don't think Kirby smart hides that. Like you got to be all in to coach for him. And, you know, you've, you've heard about their recruiting budget and just all the stuff that they do. And I, I mean, it is not an accident that they have acquired the talent that, that they have. I mean, it's just not. Well, I think that's a big, I think that's a good part of what Venables has done at OU with adding all of these different positions and roles. It's, it's taking a lot off of your money makers, your position coaches, you know, recruiting assistants and having a lot of help on some of that stuff that they're doing game planning, like the administrative end of game planning, like, you don't just sit in a room and say, we're going to run this coverage. We're going to put this blitz up. We're going to do, you have to then like 
draw all of that up against every formation that your opponent is going to run. You have to get that out to the players, like notes, tips, and reminders. Like there is so much administrative uh, to it that you, whenever you combine that with keeping up with your guys going to class and workouts and being coached up and uh, taking care of your recruiting, there's just so much there. I love that he's added so many people behind the scenes to help with a lot of that other, that other stuff. That's the yeah. time consuming stuff. Yeah. It's what analysts are for. That's right. right? To do right. all, all of that work. Right. That's, that's what they're for. Okay. So we, we had, we had Brett McMurphy on last episode uh, to talk about the college football playoff, not expanding. And we, we got to get a lot of Brett's thoughts. And if you haven't listened to that interview, highly recommend going to our last last episode and checking it out. But there are a couple of things that I feel like we still needed to touch on because I'm still, a little, I, I'm still kind of pissed that the leaders, the, you know, air quotes leaders of college football weren't able to, weren't able to get anything done. So for, for what one, one thing that I keep hearing is that, it's like some galaxy brain play that that by not expanding now, by like taking less now that it will lead to them bidding it out and making more money. After we talked to Brett McMurphy and he told us that ESPN would have been willing to bring other media partners in, like that's just not true from, from what I've gathered. Like they could have done both. They could have expanded it out now, made more money, and then bid it out when the contract was up. So I, I, I once again, just from a business perspective, like I, it's baffling to me that the college football playoff isn't expanding. I, I don't understand. Yeah. Well, who knows what the landscape looks like whenever they're proposed, you know, kicking the can until – So there is no guarantee down the road. You just never know. Likely there's the market is still going to be there and college football is still going to be, uh, you know, one of the highest sought after entertainment options for, for Americans, but you just never know what might happen. So that's just, that's just assuming that you couldn't have done it now, which you could have. I don't know. I honestly feel like this is a very small handful of people just being a gear or a wrench in the gears for no reason, like just to hurt other people. Um, Here's the thing. Ultimately, I don't think it matters for Oklahoma. Frankly, it's probably easier to win a – four-team national championship than it is a 12-team national championship, right? Now, you could get some help by a long shot beating a really good team. You could. But you could also sustain injuries. You could, you know, you just, you never know. It's easy. The fewer games, the less variables. So for Oklahoma, I don't think it matters, right? But as a fan, I think specific, I think the biggest part of it is hosting the first round games on campus, I think has the potential to take college football just out of this world. So they're screwing it up. But the Bulls, and don't even get me started on the Rose Bowl. No one cares about the Bulls. No one cares. It's been abundantly clear. No one cares. The day you started playing a playoff, every other game outside of that was reduced to meaningless. So – you you mentioned the fans, right? And that is the part that as I thought about this more, like that's the part that bugs me. Like the the leaders of college football weren't able to get this done. And I think they failed the players, they failed the the sport, and they failed the fans. And I, I don't want to make it sound like the coaches and players aren't what makes college football. Like clearly they're the one coaching and playing in the games. But when you talk about the business of football, fans 
are what make the sport. Because everyone talks about the TV distribution, right? You know, the TV contracts. The only reason these conferences are getting those huge TV contracts are because the fans watch. And them not expanding the college football playoff is a disservice to fans. Mm -hmm. Because we, we've seen schools across the country lose interest. Fan bases across the country lose interest because a couple of weeks into the season, they've got no shot at going to the college football playoff. If these people truly had the best interest of college football in their minds, like they, they would realize that an expanded playoff would bring more fans into the fold and keep more fans into the fold for, for longer periods of time during the regular season. It would actually make the regular season even more fun for the fans and people would watch and watch and watch. I don't understand how they don't understand that. And maybe I'm missing something. I'm not going to pretend like I'm some business genius or something, but I just, the more I thought about it, the more like upset I became about it. Cause it just, it's stupid that the college football playoffs not going to expand anytime soon. Everything about college football is stupid. The whole structure of it is stupid. It's dumb. Imagine the NFL. There's 32 teams in the NFL. And then there's another 32 teams that just randomly play the, the real 32. Like, they can't make the playoffs. They can't win a Super Bowl. They're just there. That's what college football is. You have 130 Division I teams, right? And on any given year, and I'm being generous, I, you got maybe 15 that have a legitimate chance at winning a national championship. And it's more like two, <laughs> right? It's more like two. But that means you got a, a, well over 100 schools, teams, that are in the same division that are just there. They don't have the budget. They don't have the players. They don't have the fan base. They're just there. It doesn't make a damn bit of sense to me at all, but it's, it's how they've always done it. And the, the powers that be are going to continue to vote in a way which helps them stay separated from the pack, I think, right? You know, there's a chance that if you were to do a 12-team playoff with automatic bids for your conference champs, that the balance of power could change pretty quickly. You know, it could change pretty quickly. In, in a matter of five or six years, the real balance of power could could be thrown out of whack. And we know the big boys don't want to throw anything out of whack. Like, they got it great right now. Everyone makes a ton of money. There's a huge separation between them and their opponents in the amount of money that they make. If everyone, like, you divide up $450 million, like, some people are going to make more money. It's going to make them com more competitive. But. Like we already make a couple hundred million dollars a year. Is it really going to make us that more competitive? No, probably not. I don't know. It's just, it's, that's the only real thing that I could justify why they would be against it that, or they're just purposely trying to hurt a handful of teams and, and maybe a conference. All I know is Greg Sankey said a couple things this week where you're like, Oh, that's interesting. But he's like, ah, we'll see how we feel next time we talk about this. It's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh write that down, uh, you know, file it away just just in case I need that quote in, in the future. Cause it's like, hey, you know, yeah, we were we were gonna do it because it was the best thing for the sport, but who knows how we'll feel when we time, uh yeah. when we talk about the when we start these negotiations again. Thought that was uh that was definitely noteworthy. 
Yeah, that's right. Because now it's like, oh, now everyone agrees. This is great. Oh, actually, no, nah, we don't like this one. Yeah. I, that's it's, what happens, though. And, it's and just that, frustrating. That's what I think is going on, though, is you've got people in power that are sitting there playing with one another. When everyone wants a, an expansion, they're just – they're busy throwing little jabs at one another because of some couple of teams left a conference and went to another one. It Eddie is, as hell. Yeah, it's just frustrating as someone that you know, kind of covers college football, right? That's kind of part of what we do here with, with what we do for OU and then what we do on our radio shows, what we talk about on here. I, I would like for college football – to be more popular as much fun as we make of people out on the West coast, them, them starting to care more about football would be good for us. It's huge. There's a huge amount of people out there. Massive. I, I would like for them to care more. I really would because that would be good for college football as a whole. And it's just frustrating that, you know, with expansion not coming until who knows when, right? It's just frustrating that it's going to continue to be as regionalized as, as it is. Now, us living here in the state of Oklahoma, like football is, is king, right? So it's, but I'm just talking about the long-term overall health for college football. And I know things are changing rapidly with the NIL stuff and the portal and all this stuff, I get it, but I, I just want it to continue to grow because I care about college football. And, and I feel like all of these people, it was like, okay, what, what is it? What's best for us, which I understand like that's their job, but you got to look, look out for the sport as a whole. And I just don't know how, how they didn't see that. I, I just, well, it's, here's, it's here's frustrating, the, man. Here's the very telling stat, and I don't have them all in front of me, but the very first playoff, the ratings were incredible through the roof, and they've gone down every single year. This year's playoff was the lowest rated, and it's down by more than half of what the initial playoff was. And what'd you have in the initial playoff? You had Oregon, Florida State, Alabama, Ohio State, right? You were pretty well represented in – you had a West Coast team. You had Florida in there. You had Midwest, Ohio State, Alabama from the SEC. Right? Ultimately, isn't that what you want? A Pac-12, a Big Ten, an ACC, an SEC, isn't that ultimately what you want? Is, is it to be spread out and you engage all of those different, you know, if you're a, if you're in the pac 12, like it may not, Oregon may not be your team, but we played Oregon this year. Like I know that team I'm going to watch, but if it's sec over and over and over, it turns off everyone else. There's no interest there. And you've seen that play out 100% in, in the ratings. One thing that would come with college football playoff expansion that would only help the sport. If you expand the playoff, you, you play some teams you don't normally play. And then those fan bases started, they start hating each other, which is what makes college football incredible <laughs> is the exchange of trash talked on social media. Like, that's a huge part of college football now. Now, our fan base, probably the best at it, or at least you, the, probably the best at, you know, rallying the troops and going after someone. But once again, it, it's like they don't think about these things. Like, can you imagine how fun that would be for, yeah. uh, for everyone involved? Yeah. I, whenever you said that, I got, for whatever re reason, I had the vision from Star Wars. Um, when the emperor, emperor, uh, emperor is telling him, do it, strike me down. And 
the hate grows the force, right? And that's what's going on in college football. The hate grows the force and more people become engaged. And who knows? They may play against you and like you and start watching your team and following your team a little bit more. We played them last year. We saw him as a freshman. Let's follow him. You know, it's just the more people engaged, the better any idiot can figure that out. Only these guys didn't realize that if they expanded it, it would create a significantly better opportunity or a significantly better chance that OU and USC would play each other in the next couple of years. Yeah. And you talk about ratings. You talk about build up to a game. They robbed us of that. They robbed us of that possibility. Well, I'll tell you right now, I really, I don't know like, what the scenario would be, but I have a feeling if neither one of us make the playoff next year, we're going to see them in a bowl game somewhere. Like that is going to happen somewhere. That would be, if, if they play, I want something to be on the line. Like I, I, and I I'm know- with you, but I, I don't know. I just sense it happening. I hope not. That's what Brett McMurphy picked OU and USC in the Alamo Bowl. I don't want to play USC in the Alamo Bowl. It's a terrible pick. We will not be in the Alamo Bowl, but um, it's a god-awful pick, by the way. It's a horrible pick. Terrible pick. But if, if we're not in the playoff, they will do everything in their power to make that, that game happen. Ugh. Yeah, I want that game. I When that happens, it's going to happen, right? At some point, it's going to happen. I, I want there to be – I want it to feel like something is on the line. Yeah. Like big regular season game or in the playoff. I don't want it to be – no offense to the Bulls. No offense to the Alamo Bowl. Great hosts. Had a great time down there in San Antonio. But – that's that's not how I want that game to feel. Does that make sense? We need that game to be a national championship game played in uh, Las Vegas. That would be sick. Absolutely. Sign me up for that. Hopefully, we make it for kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> Where are Ted and Gabe? I don't know. I haven't seen them. <laughs> Broadcast starts in 10 minutes. Do they know? I, I haven't seen them. Quick, check the craps table at the Bellagio. Yeah. Uh, you know we man. only play craps at Riverwind. What are you talking about? Come on, man. Well, if they've got a location out in Vegas, we'll hit it up. Mo- mobile craps table. We'll bring <laughs> mobile it. 